All right. Uh, let's start with, uh, I thought, I really thought, maybe I had talked myself into it because preseason football, I thought the Steelers were going to be sneaky good. Maybe they will, but they were not. Or was that all about the San Francisco 49ers just being that good? I think it's probably more about San Francisco than it was about Pittsburgh. Um, although, you know, as you mentioned, you listened to the Pick Six podcast, and mm-hmm. uh, Ryan Wilson led our recap last night. That was an yes. attempt to that was an attempt to keep it at a tight ninety minutes versus <laughs> full two hours. One hour thirty four minutes, according to my counter. That's right. I uh, I actually um, purposely, if you if you if you watch it on video, you could see like the laughter creeping across my face. Uh, stretch it across the 90 minute window just to make Wilson mad. It's quite all uh, right. Yeah. But I mean, I think like, you know, if you're a Steelers fan, you're definitely feeling, um, you know, a high level of concern that like one Matt Canada is a problem. And I think, you know, people around here will understand that, um, you know, he, he maybe, maybe not the greatest offensive play caller. There's actually three coaches on that, um, on that Steelers staff that, that were on the NC state staff that didn't win a, a, a or that went like Oh and eight in the conference, mm. um, which is, which is just a very odd coincidence. Um, but I, you know, I think, uh, I think you look at the offense and you definitely say, all right, that preseason was fun, but now that the, you know, the, the, the real, the bullets are flying, so to speak. Um, it, it doesn't, it sure doesn't look quite as good. And, and Kenny Pickett struggled, but I, I think you also have to say, all right, this San Francisco defense might just be one of the best in the league, if yeah. not the best in the league. And, you know, Brock Purdy and uh, Patrick Peterson had some some words before and after the game with, with Pat P <laughs> yeah. claiming he was tipping plays, and, and Purdy, looked, Purdy looked really sharp. I mean, yep. he, he got the ball out quick. He, he and Brandon Ayuk had fantastic chemistry. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, elite as always. Jeez. And, I mean, dude, right? Like, like if if – if all those guys are operating, like if, if Brock Purdy is playing like that all season long, then the Niners are just going to be, you know, the best team in, in football. <laughs> like, I mean, right. Cause, cause that defense looks the part. And so I, I think it's probably more about San Francisco, but I, you should absolutely be, you know, uh, tapping the panic button a little bit if you're a Steelers fan. Yeah. Look, the um, preseason football really doesn't matter. I mean, it, mean it, it, you, it, it doesn't matter at all. Right. You you can knock some rust off, but ultimately you're probably not playing against other teams' ones ever. So that doesn't really matter. Um, but, I, I mean, the Steelers well, do. And sometimes even as we'll talk about with the Panthers, it's like, you, you know, you, you can have panics about, panic about the offensive line, but it might be because other teams are being more aggressive. Like, it, you know, I mean, so it's, it, it, yeah, it, it doesn't matter in like several ways. And with Pittsburgh in particular, it's like, Great, Kenny Pickett. You were, you know, that's that's great that you were good in the preseason, but man, right. like, you know, you got to be good in the regular season too. Yeah. And the, so w- one weekend, it doesn't so look so good for the Steelers, and it's a difficult division as we found out because Cleveland's defense is outstanding. Although they yep. might just own Joe Burrow. He's what one in five in his yeah. career against the Browns, which is a bizarre, bizarre number. Let me go to MetLife Stadium last night when the Jets, or sh- I should say, if the Jets score a point, well, that'll be the first time the home team did uh, at MetLife Stadium. 40 to nothing? <laughs> and here's the thing about it. Um, and I don't know what game Chris Collinsworth was watching last night. Dallas's offense was not impressive. They, they, they didn't have to do anything. <laughs> well, I know, but it still, it still was not impressive. And yeah. Collinsworth was convinced, and I'm using air quotes here, convinced that they'll be fine with Mike McCarthy calling plays. I'm not saying they won't, but there was nothing last night that should have told you that Dallas will be fine with McCarthy calling plays because the Giants were so horrifically bad. Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, you know, apologies to all Cowboys fans, including my, my good friend Heidi B. Uh, you know, for, for me picking the Giants to win and so to win I. that game and to cover that game for CBSSports.com, that was... Uh, that was a, I've made a huge mistake moment, right? The, like the, the Arrested Development GIF, um, <laughs> it, it, and it was that thing was dead out of out of the gate. Although, like the Giants did a pretty good job moving the ball down the field. They, they, they on, the first first on, the on the first drive, on the first drive, yeah, and Collinsworth said, "It's I I I 
I comment. I was making pizza at home. Uh, so I, I, as I'm handmade homemade pizza. Absolutely. Or, or, as I was oh. making, as I was uh, spreading Needing the toppings. The no, I had already kneaded the dough. Uh, the ah. dough was kneaded before the game started. As I was making the actual pie. Uh, Collinsworth said out loud, boy, this game is going very much the way the Giants wanted it. It was the first drive of the game. And the I, very next thing that happened was Andrew Thomas, uh, false start. False start. And then the snap went, uh, on the ground yep. past Daniel Jones. Then there was the missed field goal and uh, the, the block, block field goal, goal for a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. That was the last time the Giants were even part of the equation. Yeah. Yeah, and he also remarked and said something on that first drive about how he's like, he's like, this is, he's like, he's like, Mike, you know, this is, this is the Giants are really taking away the Cowboys' ability to get downhill with their rushers, yeah. and it's like, right, and then all of a sudden it was like Daniel Jones was just under siege. Um, yeah, I do think that like that game, it's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that the, the it was, I'm not, I'm not trying to make any claim that it was like it wasn't, it wasn't a forty nothing beatdown, but the Giants, I mean. The Giants had like if you go score there first, it, it changes everything because yep. all of a sudden you know you don't you know the the Cowboys had two defensive touchdowns, I mean like quick or two spread defensive special teams touchdowns like quick like I had their defense in fantasy. Um, sorry, Will Edwards, but they dropped a forty-one on your face, buddy. Yeah. Um, and like it's it's one of those where we're not question. I don't want. I don't want to come out and question the Cowboys' offense or question the Cowboys because if that defense plays like that, you know, if they play as well as they did, like they're going to be a really good team. But we just didn't see anything from their offense. Nothing. You know, like we didn't. There, there was nothing to no, see. Because, I actually saw they, average from their offense. I thought Dak was average to bad. I didn't think Dak was good. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just hard to, it's, it's just hard to get a firm grasp of. Dak was thirteen to twenty four for one hundred forty three yards. No touchdowns, no picks. I mean, Tony Pollard ran. I thought Tony Pollard looked pretty good. Um, and and C.D. Lamb yeah. look look. I mean, like 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 the way we, he should. Like he he's awesome. C.D. Lamb's incredible. Right. Um. But like it, it, again, it's just it's just, it's not and it's not like their fault. They just had, you know, they had a um, they had the no Iguanagmini uh block field goal and then the return and they, you know but into the first quarter it's sixteen nothing and they've got a field goal. Um, where you know they had a, a decent march, and then like a, a pick six, yep. and uh, you know, like after that, it was also kind of like Dallas wasn't going to be hyper aggressive on offense, trying to swing it all around. I mean, you know, you've got this big lead, your defense is locking down the Giants, so it's it, it, like I don't want to. I think it's just I think it's just hard to get a. Well, no, I agree. Said, I'm not saying their offense is bad. I'm just saying that there was nothing that we saw, and and Collinsworth was. G- gushing about McCarthy and Dak, I'm like uh, the jury is way out on whether or well, not that's going to be a well, like, successful like to, to tandem. The, well, to compare the two, like San Francisco, you felt very clearly uh-huh. as if they played very, well, they played really well on both sides of the ball. I think Dallas, it was like, all right, that defense uncorked on these guys, and they got you know, and yep. they scored twice, but it's it was sort of hard to tell whether or not the offense like you, you didn't get a firm grasp no, on how, nothing like, what the offense identity will be and that's fine that, that is fine i i we did get a firm grasp on the uh, the giants might be in a ton of trouble although the caveat dallas's defense could end up being one of the two or three and, and the, Gi- best like the, in the giants league. tripped all over themselves i mean yep. they were they were they were giving it away they were giving the ball away left and right they were they they were bad daniel jones was awful uh and man Daniel Jones, it's like criticizing Beyonce on Twitter. If you criticize Daniel Jones on Twitter, I mean, the people go bananas. Like, you realize it's just Daniel Jones. He's not that good. Like, I question whether the Giants gave him a $40 million contract in the offseason. I didn't get it. And, you know, I've said this out loud so many times, it's ridiculous at this point. Uh, But when you pay a good player... And I'll I just say Daniel Jones is an average NFL quarterback. You play an average quarterback, top player money, then you lose. You lose. I just yeah, put you I, behind, put you behind the eight ball for sure. I mean, it just eats up too much of your, in a salary cap game. If there's no salary cap and you can pay anything you want for anybody, uh, go go ahead and do it. But I think the Giants are in trouble. Um, I'm sorry. This goes into the you hate to see it category. Sean it, Payton losing at home to the Raiders. On opening day, mm, gosh, I hate that. 
I I'm don't a big hate Sean Payton that. fan, so I do hate it. But I understand that many people enjoy a little Sean and Freud with uh, Sean and Freud, if you will. Yeah, with uh, with, with Sean Payton. So like, I, I get it. Um, not it's not a great look, especially. It's like you open the game. Like you open your career as a Denver Broncos head coach, you're like, yeah, that's right. We're going on sides to start the season. It's like, all right, we get it. You went on sides and over the second half of the Super right. Bowl, you got it. And it's like, you know, it, it just, it's like a, ha, ah, check this out. Mm -hmm. Look at the big brain on Brad. Well, you know, you gave the Raiders a short field and, you know, you, you have this offense. It's not exactly like, you're not in the Super Bowl, Sean. <laughs> like, I, like I, I get, I get, I get the idea of like, let's just flip, let's just flip these guys on their head, uh, you know, get, get the onsides. And then it's like, but you know, just, just let your, just kick off and let your defense play and, and force Josh McDaniels and, and Jimmy Garoppolo to, to beat you over the full length of the field. Um, you know, and uh, as, as John Breach pointed out on the podcast, you know, Sean Payton. So that's one where you give a short field with an onsides kick. That's I mean, pretty un unusual and pretty unnecessary. Like, Onside kicks are hard to get, even surprise mm -hmm. ones at the beginning of games. Um, and then two, uh, Will Lutz, uh, Will Lutz missed an extra point and a, I think like a field goal that was like within decent range yes. and he lost by one point. And this is after he, you know, kicked he he fired Brandon McManus, the longtime Broncos kicker, and brought in Lutz from New Orleans because that was his guy. Right. And you know, you, you know, oops. I mean, whoops. Yeah. Well, whoops. So like. like some 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 special teams gaffes there by, by Mr. Payton. I said this a month ago when Payton came out and said that Nathaniel – he didn't mention Nathaniel Hackett, but when he said it was uh, the worst coaching job in the history of the NFL, we know who he was talking about, uh, and then went on to criticize the Jets after it, and he could be yeah. right on both counts. I'm not even arguing, and I said it at the time. He's probably right, but it's really – uh, it's really awful to say that out loud. And I, my feeling was, you better win now, sir, because yeah. you would, it would suck to have the second worst coaching job in <laughs> right. NFL history in Denver. And those people want to win, and they don't have any history with Sean Payton. So uh, the, he should probably win. Dolphins and Chargers uh, was... Game of the week. Game of the week. Super entertaining. Tua Tungavailoa, if he stays healthy, might be just great. Of course, staying healthy is the uh, the biggest question with him because he is fragile. And he was fragile before the concussion problem happened because he had hip problems. As a young person, to have yeah. hip problems is just no good. Um, but I'm not sure that this game isn't about the Chargers just not being able to get away from the fact that they're the Chargers. Uh, yeah, I'd be fine with that. I think... You know, I think both teams had. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I sort of, I don't read too. So for me, the takeaway is one that, like, if Tua is healthy, the Dolphins' upside is huge. Yep. Um, they also had to play from behind, right? They were they were coming from behind. They had to throw a bunch. Uh, in, in, instead of running it against the Chargers, which is usually how you win, the Chargers, you know, ran the ball incredibly effectively against the Dolphins. Two hundred and some and odd just, yards rushing. And then decided to stop running the ball when they when uh -huh. they had the when they were down two with like two minutes to go, which is just insane. Like they should have absolutely have have used Austin Eckler there instead of dropping back and letting the the Dolphins pass rush on Cork on them and, and and take Justin Herbert out. And all of a sudden they had like a third and thirty five or something like that. Um, so that's sort of questionable by Kellen Moore in, in that spot. Even though they, I mean, but I don't. I think it's just going to be if if two is healthy and if you know, like Justin Herbert's got all his weapons. It's going to be tough to stop either of those offenses. It's just a matter of, you know, can like, will, will we ever see the chargers properly close out of football game? And, and I don't know that the answer is yes. No, they, the answer is yes. When, uh, when they Hell get up, over. up, when they get a pro, maybe when they get a proper head coach, I don't know. I'm, I've never been a uh, Brandon, uh, Staley, Stanley, whatever his name Staley, is. Staley, Yeah. Uh, he's very good in front of a podium. I don't think he is nearly as good with a headset on. Well, I mean, his, his defense just hasn't been good with the Chargers. They he's a defensive guy. Too. Like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. a defensive guy. Like, the defense just hasn't been good. I mean, like, you know, golf clap all around if your offense is good with Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, like an all-pro left tackle that got rookie of the year votes two years ago, um, and, uh, you know, Mike Williams, and now Quentin Johnson. Like, congratulations, you didn't screw it up. Like, you know, right. it's like, like, do you, like, you don't get, nobody should get an award for having a good offense with all that, right? It's like, it's like, um, 
it's like one of those, yeah, it's, 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 oh, congratulations. Here's your award. Thanks for meeting the bare minimum expectations. Speaking um, of the, bare minimum, yes. me, I want to close on this game. I really thought that, sh- that the Chicago Bears, it has nothing to do with the preseason. I thought that the Chicago Bears were going to be the surprise team in the NFC North. Uh, and they were, they were not good. But the real takeaway from that was that the Green Bay Packers are. The Packers were good on 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 both sides of the ball. They were good on defense. And Jordan Love and I, uh, Jordan Love was very good. And I know you guys talked about it, but I have not heard anybody else mention the fact that there has to be some positive for Jordan Love watching for three full seasons. Not that yes. everybody should watch for three full seasons. But he looked so much more comfortable doing what he was supposed to be doing. And the fact that he was on the bench for three years didn't hurt him. I wish more teams would take this route when it comes to rookie quarterbacks. They all start because, well, we have you have to start them and accelerate the growing process. I mean, Patrick Mahomes did it. Yes, exactly. We have to Carson Palmer, Philip Rivers. I mean, all good examples. Incredible examples. Incredible examples of quarterbacks who waited a year. Aaron Rodgers. (laughs) Unbelievable. And because we think that the salary cap dictates what you do, it doesn't have to. It simply doesn't have to. And I wonder how many quarterbacks are ruined because they start too soon and develop bad habits, and you can't break them. Well, I think, like, uh, maybe if you want to throw another good example out there, and, and, and you know, talking about the Bears, but, and, and like, this, you know, it's tough, it's, it's tough to say because it's, it's, it's not a simple cinnamon, they, they turn out great, but, like, no. when Chicago uh, brought in our buddy Mike Glennon and, and paid him in free agency and then went to Mitchell Trubisky, like, w- like way too quickly. Right away. It's like, like, like it, 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 Mr. Trubisky only started like 12 games in college and probably would have behooved him to sit. I mean, like mm-hmm. we've seen some action and he didn't, he couldn't beat out, um, can you pick it or whatever, but it's like, you know, he, he sat for a year in Buffalo and seemed to have like a, a better grasp on how to, on how to play quarterback. So I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line to walk, but if your team isn't ready, if your quarterback isn't ready and your team isn't ready and you have a v- established veteran there, like I don't see the need to like just r- yank the ripcord when everything's going poorly and go to the rookie because it's like you know, yeah, play the kid, but if the kid's not ready, don't you know like let him sit. And Jordan Love clearly benefited from having some time to to sit and learn and grow, develop, and sort of like you know get some action in NFL games and preseason games and sort of learn how to be a quarterback to watch Aaron Rodgers to see what he does. And you see some of Aaron Rodgers in his game too, I think. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Like you saw that with Zach Wilson a little bit in the preseason where it's like, you can see just picking up on the tendencies and and the, and the, and and the, and the way that Rodgers operates. I mean, it definitely wears off of these kids. So yeah, I I think, I think in this case, especially when they drafted him and then Rodgers wins two MVPs, you know, like they didn't, they didn't win a title, but I mean, like, it's not like they were stinking while, while love was on the bench. Right, they, they, there, there was no pressure to play love because Rodgers right. was playing well, and I understand all of that, uh, but I think it matters that these guys have a chance to develop, especially considering the college game and the pro game might as well be chess and checkers. Uh, there's yeah. just no correlation to playing quarterback uh, in college football and the NFL. They are different beasts, and nobody seems to want to acknowledge that. Well, and I think too, it's like it, what 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 type of quarterback is is like Bryce Young, for instance. I think is better off not sitting, right? Because I think I think he's just he, he's just sort of like his floor is raised enough where you don't he doesn't need to sit and learn. Like he can play now, um, and, and maybe Anthony Richardson can too. And, and certainly he had some moments for the Colts, but like at the same time, you just just sort of like a, somebody oh. like a Jordan Love who was a little more raw, like you know, a little, like a little less refined. That's the type of guy you want to. I will say, I will, that way. I will say this. I think that it wouldn't hurt any of these rookies to watch for a year. Sure. But none of the teams are equipped to do that. Right. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, too, because yeah. typically speaking, if you were drafting a highly coveted quarterback, uh, you you know, you are, you are, uh, you're high, you're, you're t- you know, top 10 pick right. in the draft, right? Steve and DeBerg is, is too old to, uh, to be your quarterback uh, like he was in front of Joe Mont- was Joe Montana. 
Uh, and John Elway wasn't De- De- uh, yeah yeah Deberg De- uh, Deberg was there's a great story about the voice box on the, on the back of Deberg's you ever, you ever hear that one Randy Cross told it no so it was, it was like, it's like a, I'll find it and send it to you but it's like he had a he had like had to attach a voice box to the back of his like a speaker to the back of his uh, shoulder pads because he he lost his voice the night before a game so <laughs> that everyone could hear him that's awesome all right man uh, we will talk next next Monday my friend. <laughs> 